So if you're thinking about getting involved with real estate investing, mobile homes might not be a bad way to go. You can actually get started with as little as $500 all the way up to possibly $20,000. Small amount of money to own an asset, an income producing asset, right? So today we're gonna to go to Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm gonna hang out with a real estate broker who actually invests in mobile homes. She manages several mobile home parks and this first video, we're gonna take you to one of her parks drive you all the way through there. We're gonna look at the infrastructure, some of the, some of the units that are on there, some of the empty lots. She's gonna break down the numbers for you. It's unbelievable content. I hung out with her for about five or six hours. So I had to break this video up into two parts. So much content, matter of fact, into three parts. So much data. This first video will just take you through, through the park. And while I was there, we, we actually looked at over a hundred doors just while I was there one day that, that she manages. In video two, we're gonna go inside of one of the units that she's renovating. What material is she using? How is she putting the floors? How is the kitchen, the roofing, the siding, the skirting, all that stuff. That's gonna be video two. And then number three, we're gonna take you to some other parks that she manages. This lady is a walking dictionary. She knows 100% of the inf information. You are in for a treat. And listen, while you're watching this, there's a timeline in the video description, as well as a link to her a two day mobile home masterclass. She did a masterclass just for you so you can learn all this stuff, right? Download that if you like and stay tuned because we're putting together a mobile home boot camp for you. It's gonna be some unbelievable stuff. So listen, sit back, relax, get, a, get ready to learn a lot. Subscribe to the channel, like this content if I'm pouring into you and share with anybody else that's thinking about getting into the mobile home business, all right? Let's head down to Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, so today's video, we're gonna be going to visit Stephanie McAniff in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I wanna say thank you to my daughter. Camera's kinda lopsided there, little buddy. Make sure we're a little straight there. Cool, Taylor is camera lady today. Round up, we're taking you to a mobile home park. Not only is Stephanie a mobile home park owner, she is a mobile home investor, and I wanna share with you exactly how she does it. We're gonna walk through some mobile homes today and whatever she has planned for us as we uh, as we cover how to invest in mobile homes. Let's do it. Greetings class, it's Chris Haskins with TheRealEstateRoundup.com. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Today, we've got a special guest and actually a, a training for you today. Stephanie McAniff is a real estate broker. She's been investing in mobile homes for many years and she's actually a mobile home park owner. So today we're gonna just share with you the ups and downs and ins and outs of mobile home park investing. Stephanie. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Welcome to my world. Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> Charlotte, North Carolina. We're at a mobile home park that has 47 total lots. 47. 47 total lots. Um, this one has a mixture of homes a ranging from 1960s all the way up to uh, 2000, late, okay. early 2000s. 60s to 2000s. To wow. 2000s. Yeah, this, this park has been around for a long, long time. Okay. Uh, we have residents that have been here from one year to 20, 30 years. So, yeah, yeah, and there's one, and there's one location. The great thing about this park is it's central to everything. Okay. So I'm five minutes from multiple highways. Okay. Um, I'm close to, it's close to shopping. There's supermarkets, there's gas stations, there's, you know, dollar type, general type stores. Um, fast food, restaurants. Fast food, I mean, restaurants, everything. everything is in this location. Now, I know most of you probably are not used to seeing a park in a populated area. You're used to seeing it in a rural area. There are Back many woods. parks, there are many parks in areas like this. And the reason why is because when these people had this land, of course, none of this, you know, beautiful stores and everything were, was here, ah, but they knew the location was an up and coming area. 
So wow. instead of having vacant land just sitting here not making any money, they thought, why not put some mobile homes on it, generate oh, some yeah. income from that land until the hockey puck, like they say, comes this way. Mm. It came this way, but they're making decent living from it. So yeah. why upset the apple cart and change it to something else? Now, can you maybe uh, change your mobile home park to something else, houses, apartments? You can, you just have to check with your zoning. Yep. And right now, why why change anything when it's doing really well? Yep. So Roundup, this, this is probably gonna be a multiple uh, part video. Taylor, take a look down at, oh, I forgot to thank my daughter, her camera lady today, thank you Taylor. Just look at this, guys, you've got Commercial buildings, look way down there, Taylor. Give him a nice pan. We're gonna drive him down there. You got a bank right there. Strip mall over there. Another strip mall, got an Arby's over there. We're gonna take y'all around so you can see this thing, but it is really crazy to see. For what I'm used to, Stephanie, is the backwoods. You got woods, woods, mm -hmm. woods, woods. Bam, mobile home park. Yeah, and I do have, you know, I manage a few parks like that are like that. Mm -hmm. They're in the woods. What you see as the woods, really map it. Think about it because you may be really close to shopping. Mm -hmm. It may not be right at your back door like you see here, but if you go maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes down the road, they're usually in a populated area. Gotcha, gotcha. So Roundup Stephanie today, I have the honor of hanging out with her. I drove down here, literally. <laughs> we're working on putting together a mobile home training for you, but we're gonna, we're gonna take you inside of a home today. Steph's gonna kind of point out some of the construction. So this is probably gonna be a two or three part video. So hang along with us and we're gonna answer some of your questions. I got a ton of questions that you guys sent in to ask Stephanie about mobile homes because this is a big business. What makes it so popular, Steph? Well, one, you have a low barrier of entry. So it, as far as mobile homes themselves, buying individual homes, it's a lot cheaper to buy a mobile home than it is to buy a single family house. I mean, cause you're in a single family house, right? So on average, if you had a cookie cutter, you know, low end single family house. What are you looking at as far as price? Minimum is 50 to 70. Okay, and so minimum here is free. <laughs> and your maximum, <laughs> if you're buying them used, could be maybe $20,000. Mm. Yeah, that's crazy. So, you you're know, and that 20,000 is, is really, I mean, that would have to be a really high end that's in the something. late 2000s, you know what I mean? That's it would, upper end. That upper end, upper yeah, end. That's, you can get yeah. much in the house with yeah that. you're not going to get that with the house and no, then as exactly. far as repairing them it's again low cost of repair the the materials are a lot cheaper um than single family houses um you still put good quality materials in there mm -hmm. but it just doesn't need to be at the same quality of a single family house because it's not going to get usually the wear and tear of a single family house mm -hmm. unless you have you know for sure it's going to be a family in there but you're not putting granite you know, you're not putting uh, stainless steel appliances. You're not yes. putting those things in there. Now, if you did, would, would the potential tenant be wowed and excited? Yeah. But will you probably have that when you when they leave? No. <laughs> so, so, it's irrelevant. It, yeah. Wasting yeah, money. it is. It really is. It really is. All right, so we're going to take you around here. I, when I pulled up here, I was shocked. I, I literally almost <laughs> drove by it. I'm like, this a mobile home? What the hell? I uh, almost drove by, so we're going to go down here and give you some, just some exterior of the park, and then we're going to take you through so you can see what it looks like. There you go. Anything else you want to share with us, stuff? No, that's it. I just, welcome to my world. I'm excited that there's so many people wanting to learn about mobile homes and mobile yeah. home investing, mobile home parks. Um, it's, it's what I do and I love. So, happy to share. <laughs> you are somebody. You are somebody. <laughs> Let's do it, guys. So, Stephanie, we're pulling up here. We're like half a mile from your mobile home park, and it's completely commercial. Completely commercial, nice or even less than a half a mile away. Um, we'll be there in probably one minute. Um, unbelievable. Look at this. Yeah. All this, too. Yeah. Like I said, this is, you know, more than likely was not as developed when this park was developed. As a matter of fact, I know it wasn't because I remember not seeing half of these shops. I've lived here for over 20 years. So you remember so, all this stuff coming Yeah, out. I remember it just being trees in some spots. But uh, yeah, this is, this is what happens. You know, most of the mobile home parks were built on farmland, mm -hmm. either farmland or, or family land. And hopefully, like most people that buy land, they're hoping that 
things are going to develop around the land. Okay. But these people just capitalized on the fact, why have vacant land? Why not have some income coming in while we're waiting for things to come our way? Look at this. My favorite fast food, Arby's. <laughs> we get that pan, get that whole uh, strip mall over there, too. This is crazy. You got an entire strip yep, mall. Yep, and you have a supermarket. You have a bank. Bank. Look at this. Um, you have, um, you know, a fitness center grocery nearby. Grocery store from walking distance. Here's the park, y'all. I just, I'm just amazed. Which way should we go and stuff? Uh, just go all the way down. Okay, it has go three down. entrances. Give them a nice pan tail as we're driving by. Yeah, we have three entrances here. Watch the camera, the, the mirror there. So we're gonna go in to this entrance coming up right here. Just turn right. Right here. And then that way you can loop around and you can see majority of the park. It's it's a lot bigger than what you're going to see right now. Mm -hmm. um, it goes further down and <laughs> it loops all the way around. It's it's a this, pretty big so park. We're like right in the park. I just, yeah. Um, I feel like I was just in the city area. Now I'm in the- In the country. It's crazy. So and yeah. if you look over here to the left, you have a vacant lot. Okay. Um, and you can see, you can tell that it's a vacant lot. Most cases is because it'll have a concrete pad. Oh, okay. This is a vacant lot. That right is here. a vacant lot. That's about the shape of what, that's what is under most mobile homes. You get that too? Is that concrete pad. And we have a few, few vacant lots here. Um, the reason why we haven't filled them is one, because, you know, they, reached the capacity they wanted as far as what they were going to purchase uh -huh. homes for. Okay. Um, and then we do have people that come and want to bring their homes in. But the situation right now is that some municipalities will not allow you to refill vacant lots. Um, I know I know it's here in the South, it may be in some other states too, if the spot has been vacant longer than six months. That is so Various crazy. reasons for that. One, it could be because they're trying to phase the mobile home park out mm -hmm. of their of their county or their area. Um, another could be because they think the mobile home park is gonna bring in, you know, a bad element. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, I don't think you see any bad element. <laughs> this looks, I mean, this is just <laughs> Anywhere gorgeous. around. It's gorgeous driving through here. Oh, what's this? Just go around the corner. Okay, around the corner. This is gorgeous. But you said this is a senior living area. Yeah, this is a senior community. Um, it's not slated like that in, mm -hmm. in the books and records at the county hall. But it's been here so many years before there was such a thing as, uh, you know, senior housing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so yeah, mostly yeah. Um, in, most of the individuals here are um, 55 and older. And they've been, some people have been here for 30 years. 30 years, years yeah. I'm yeah. presuming that collecting rent is not even on your mind. It, it is not in. even. It's yeah. It's most most like older people, it's paid uh, between the first and the fifth. Um, so right now, today's the fifth. All of my rent has been collected. Yeah, amazing. Give them a nice pan over there too. Look at this. Now every once in a while, you do get uh, you know because they're seniors, yeah, so you may get someone in the hospital or <clears> sick <throat> or you know. Left. Um, yes. So you may get someone that's sick or something like that. Uh -huh. um, and so, but they usually will reach out and say, hey, I'm Let gonna be a little right. late, I'm in the hospital. Yeah. Now who maintains all this grass? Um, this is maintained uh, by my son actually. He's the maintenance person as far as grass and, and tree, keeping okay. bushes and stuff trimmed. Uh -huh. um, but he's a contractor uh, of the mobile home park. Okay. And uh, he does a really good job. This. Uh, he, what, according to him, this park is about two football fields, okay. about two football fields long. All right. This so is just beautiful. He has a, he does have a lot of mowing to do. I mean, I could presume it must pay good. You got to take care of yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Geese chilling. Is she sitting on eggs too? Yep. Look at this. And that oh. one in the road. And they are mean. They will chase you. <laughs> so. Look at because if their egg, their eggs, they come this time of season yeah, every year, spring. and their eggs are here, and so they will, yeah. They get hot. You may want to just U-turn in the grass so we don't disturb this one. Why would you put her eggs in the middle oh, and get her oh, to? Another okay. goose chilling. Right or left, though? It doesn't matter. You could just U-turn. Oh, okay. And then we're going to go back out. Are they sitting on eggs? <laughs> I want to chase that so bad. Please don't chase the, the, the goose. I want to 
Nice. Look at this. Uh, look at this pond we got here, Taylor. Isn't this beautiful? Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful area back Isn't here. Isn't this pond nice? Okay. Hint, hint, hint. Yeah. So, I tried um, getting chased by a goose, and then she just flew away. Yeah, Not yeah. these. I bet I'm faster than the goose, though. And if you, we're going to go to that green house right over there in oh, front of that Mustang, to. that's the house that we're going to take a look inside. Um, we're in the process of renovating. Okay. It's a 1971. 1971? Yeah. Come on, go home. This is nice back here. Is the rent here more because it's got water view? No. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. It's all the same. He could really did his good. Check this one out too. He got siding on here, painted. Yeah, this is what we call a double wide. Okay. What's the difference between the what and the what? I don't know. Uh, a double wide. If you look at it, it looks like two mobile homes sitting next to each other. Okay. Um, they're closer to what you would call a manufactured home. Which way am I going, Steph? Uh, you're going right around this corner. Batista, okay. And right on the opposite side of this uh, grapevine thing, uh, you're gonna turn right down there. To turn right here where I this white car is. I love these little is. small little rows because your right car here. fits perfectly on there. Yeah, well, you gotta think this park was built in the 70s, so the roads were for those types of cars. Yeah. Look at this. Okay, so you're renovating. This is when you're renovating. This is one one of the ones that I am renovating. Oh, okay. Let's take a look at that. Give them a nice shot. So, can we show them the double wide and the single wide real quick stuff? Yeah, over that's here? a double wide. Um, you can see how it's it has a pitch roof, and right down the middle, right underneath that pitch if you if you drew a line straight yeah. down that would be the equivalent of two mobile homes side by side okay. i'm sure you've seen a double wide if you've ever been driving down the highway yeah and you see a truck mm-hmm. that has a half of a house oh, okay. and then you and then you see a second truck with the other half mm-hmm. that is a double wide they gotcha. come they bring it and they gotcha. stick it together gotcha gotcha, gotcha. double wide double wide. do they cost more i don't know they cost a lot more yeah it is high so the double Y stuff, tell me a little bit about you said. Oh, so so a double Y, if you bought them new, they range in price from maybe about 25000 all the way up to could be 150, 200000 because now they have all kinds of high-end features inside of a, of a double Y. Why so do you I care could, about I, a single or double Y? I mean, who I mean, is this more space? Well, it's, as far as single and double wide, it really only becomes a conversation if you're looking to move in one. Mm-hmm. If you're looking to invest in them, that's really not a conversation of whether it's double wide, single wide, you gotcha. know, how expensive it is, because you're not buying it new. Mm-hmm. More than likely you're buying them used from gotcha. someone else. So it's, double wide is more going to be like a homeowner type thing? Yeah. Double wide you typically see on private land. Mm. Um, you may see them, like now you see one in the park, yeah. but she has a good size lot. Is that lot bigger than the rest? I oh, see this is kind of close here. It's She's not so much, it's just it's, as far as when you're bringing them in, as far as permitting, they have to have a certain amount of uh, setback. Setback from the street. That's it, setback and... So from a roundup, they don't know what the heck a setback is. We can walk and talk. <laughs> What's a setback still? All right, so a setback are, is the measurements from either the road or power lines or water lines, et cetera, away from the house. So, the house. yeah, it's so just a distance. distance. Yeah, Think of it like a sidewalk. A sidewalk may be the setback from, feet, 15 from, 15 yeah, from a supermarket or something like that. Yeah. So setbacks, very, very important setbacks. And when we're doing new construction, you can get in the world of trouble doing those setbacks. Yeah, boys. yeah. So let me give you a little information about this house. Yes. Yeah, so like I said, this is a 1971's house. It has really, really, too? has really, really good bones, um, which is why we took it on. Um, you can tell it's 1970s vintage. If you ever seen the Brady Bunch, remember their windows? There you go. That's the awning like they had over the Brady Bunch windows at their house. <laughs> um, the door, that actually right there, that silver is actually a door. But the door, we they took the door off, um, probably wow. because there's one, two, three different entrances. Yeah, I don't like so two. it might have been a, a door that was, uh, you know, old or water or damaged bedroom, or maybe. something like that. Hmm? Could it possibly have been in a bedroom, maybe. No, that's in the hallway. You'll see it okay, when we go so inside. Hallways. But um, it what probably I'm, was just worn no. out. If you notice over the top, there usually is a drip pan. I see. So that the rain comes off. So if it's not there, that water was constantly going I on that see. door and damaging it. Okay. Is that and something it, that they need to have? Yeah, it's good to have a drip pan over your over any kind of doors. Okay. 
when I look at this Stephanie, Taylor, go out there and get him a pan. When I'm looking at this Stephanie, I'm scared. You can go. <laughs> and why is that, <laughs> Chris? Why Taylor, is that? I'm not. We, we can cut it. Yeah. Why I'm are you nervous. Scared? Look, I mean, uh, I, I'm just once again. We're here. I'm being transparent. Yeah. No. Yeah. Why? Steph, I'm like. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just the color. I'm, I, I'm nervous a little bit. Well, maybe this. I just feel like it's a lot of work to be done, but and, I don't and know. And it's not. And that's why I want us to start on the outside. Gotcha. Because I want you to see, like, I knew that you would go, to, what? Wait a minute. She said Brady's Bunch, 1970s <laughs> awning. What in the world? Um, there's grass. But when I show you the inside, I wish I could have showed you pictures. I could show you um, flat pictures of what it looked like while we're working on it, mm -hmm. before we worked on it. But when you go on the inside, you're going to be like, whoa, I could do something with this. Gotcha. Well, all right, so you give, you give him a pan, Taylor? I guess what I'm nervous about is mm -hmm. I look at the landscaping. When I see a house, I don't even see the landscaping. So I'm presuming you don't see it either. I don't see the landscaping, no. I figured that. Yeah, I don't see the landscaping. Because we'll come that. in and we'll clean all this up. I figured that. You know, landscaping is always last. Yeah, you know what? And it's probably because of my untrained eye for mobile homes. Yeah, and because you haven't seen it. Have you ever been inside one? Like, like, raw? No. Nobody living in it? <laughs> oh, yay. I wish I'm learning too, y'all. I wish I could take you in a stinky one. That would be cool. <laughs> come on, uh, Taylor. Come on, buddy. Taylor, you're doing a good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I will show you something real quick. Because not many people get to see these. This is what we call hurricane straps, this right here. Now, yeah, when, we, when we finish this home, all of that will be taken off. That's just, you know, you're in North Carolina, and so there's like what weeds and stuff that ground? grow up. Yeah, so you, they strap it down to the ground, and it's, it's anchored, mm -hmm. it's anchored into the ground. And that is hurricane straps. Now, I'm gonna tell you the, another reason why I'm showing you this, is because you usually don't get to see underneath a home, right? Mm -hmm. So underneath a mobile home, this is what we call skirting. Yep. It's down here, right? Or underpinning is another name for it. If we took this off right now, you would see these straps also underneath the home. So okay. in this case, back in the 1970s, they strapped this home down here. Okay. It's pretty close to the ground, so they also have hurricane straps underneath. Gotcha. And so people worry about hurricanes and Blowing tornadoes yeah. and just throwing throwing them over. It really has to be a probably category four, category five mm -hmm. to actually lift this sucker off the ground. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And that's because of these straps. Good to know that. I didn't know, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Go, Taylor. Hit Run it. past it. All right, it's getting real big. <laughs> you in his home. Go catch him. No? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh-huh, yeah, you better. He gonna turn around and peck you. Come on, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, that thing is gonna rip your butt out. Show what it is. Let's do this. So, Steph, we have, um, I know you mentioned step septic tanks and public sewer. Just kind of mm -hmm. explain that and what this so, is and all that. Public sewer, if you live in an apartment or even a house, you more than likely have what we call city sewer, down, city, city sewer and sewer, city water. Yep. Um, when you typically have septic, um, sometimes even with city sewer, you'll see these right here. This is what we call like just a clean out. Yep. Um, so you need a special tool mm -hmm. that'll screw that off. Um, and then you can see if there's like a lot of water coming into your system and you can see the flow um, to is see this a, a septic here. Um, this this is what we like call a, a clean out. Yeah, clean this out. Is clean out. But at this park, this particular part, it is on septic. So this is a septic it's, has a clean out. That's it. I and in that. a city sewer may, I, I mean, city sewer may have a clean out as well. Yeah, I know the sewer mm -hmm. is, but I didn't know you had a clean out for a septic too. Yeah, right. yeah. Actually, this over here, this white cap, you'll see these quite often. Um, so you'll either see it look like that where you'll need a special tool uh -huh. 
or you'll see it look like this. So this is the clean out also. Mm-hmm. How do we get this open? And usually, open? usually this is where a tank might sit. Oh, I got you. Yeah, gotcha. and then um, you have like the, the water lines. That's the sewer that, line there. Yep, that right line. there comes through there. That's going from here to the home. So does each home have a septic tank or do they share? No, um, it depends on the park, but in this particular park, they share one tank. So one, two, three, three homes, maybe four, might share on this one tank. Ah, I didn't know that. Did you? Yeah. It's good that, to know. See, so not, know. not every time you hear septic, is there each home is on its own individual tank. I had no there, idea. You do have that, and those tanks are usually about maybe 3,000 gallons. Okay. Um, but then when you're talking about four, four or five homes on it, yeah. it may be a 15,000 gallon type tank. So who's responsible for dealing with this stuff? City. I mean us, the park owners, park owner, managers, manager. et cetera. So, Interesting stuff. and you'll usually know because people say, hey, my water is backing up in my sink or coming yeah. up in my tub. I usually will tell you that it needs to get pumped. Time. Okay. Yeah. How often should one, if someone is investing in mobile homes, be considered changing it out or getting it cleaned out? Um, you know, it really depends on how they were maintained in the first place. I would tell you if you're looking at a park uh, to buy it for the first time, I would honestly tell you to have a contractor come in and what we call pop the pop the tank, mm -hmm. pop the you know top of the tank. Okay. Maybe not on all of them, you know, but on at least a few of them, that'll give them an idea of the conditions of the tank. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as pumping, if the condition How, of they, the tank, do they dig a hole and see They that? dig a hole, so they have to come in with a backhoe typically. Um, I mean, they can do it oh, with a. This, they can do it with a shovel. Zoom in. They can do it with a shovel, but I would more than likely they come in with a backhoe yeah. because it depends on how it's usually kind of deep. Yeah. And then there's a concrete cover over it that has to be picked up. Wow. Which really it would take a lot of manpower yeah. to pick that up. So they usually use the backhoe and scoop it up and then lift it off. It, not to be, you know, grim, but it, it looks like the, uh, like a grave, you know, where yeah. they prep the grave, like uh, what do you call it? The crypt. Yep. type thing where it's that I concrete know. I know you're looking about stuff that. but yeah. yeah it looks something like that it's just a box and then usually in the middle they have like what we call a baffle okay so it keeps the liquid separated from the solids wow man and just a quick tip too if you do have a park ask them not only if they're pumping the liquids but ask them how often the solids have been pumped because what what you'll hear people say is, oh yeah, the tank we pump the tank all the time. We pump it maybe every two years, three years, five years. Uh -huh. Make sure you find out because if they they're not pumping the solid, which a lot of people don't know that you're supposed to pump, it that those solids will eat away at the concrete because uh -huh. it's gases, oh, and gosh. it'll eat away at that. It'll eat away at the bevel, and then you're talking about maybe replacing the tank or what they call rejuvenating the tank. That sounds expensive. It's expensive, about seven to ten thousand dollars just to rejuvenate a tank. Oh boy. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> Round up. I'm gonna get to some questions from you in a minute, but with the septic tank, uh -huh. with my viewers that want to invest in mobile homes, they don't have to worry about that. So no, I'm just if, to if you're out investing how that... in individual mobile homes, it's not really a concern to you whether or not it's on city sewer or city water or any of that stuff if you're investing in a park gotcha. but if you're on someone's private land then you see even that. though you're even though the land is still not yours you're just worried about the home it's still something you want to look into because gotcha. if that septic system um goes <sighs> which has happened to me i have a home on private land my own individual home that i'm renting out and my tenant complained that there was the water was backing up in their tub, etc. So I called the septic company. Well, no, I called the owner of the land because that's who you should call first. You don't go do it. I called them and let them know what was going on and explained that I believe the tank needed to be pumped. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the money to do it. <clears throat> so in that case, you're I had trouble. to step in because my tenant couldn't deal with that. You have so to what do I it. did was we made a deal and they gave me free lot rent for the cost of it getting pumped. For a certain amount of time or whatever? Yeah, for the cost. So it's to get it pumped was $350 to that get it bad. pumped. No, to get it pumped is about 350 depending on where you're out. Um, and my lot rent at the time was only is $125. That so, bad. wow. 
Yeah. All right. So I had a question for one of our viewers, uh, Steph. Okay. Uh, Jeff here didn't tell me where he's from. Where's Jeff from? Jeff. He wants to know what's the best way to turn around a run-down mobile home park that has vacant, very old mobile homes with broken windows. All right. So I would say if Thanks, you Jeff. if you've already purchased the park, then. Um, you already know what you're getting into. If you have not purchased the park, I'll start there first. I would say if it's something you're looking to invest in, make sure that you go to the, the police department or sheriff's department wow. and ask, what are the issues? What are the problems? They're gonna have some records, They'll perhaps. have records, or they may not even have any records. They may, just because of history. On the radar. Be able to tell you, yeah, we're dealing with you know drugs Excellent. or we're yeah. dealing with blah, blah, blah. You know, um, the other thing, if, You've already purchased a park, one, congratulations. Um, two, it can be turned around in house by house. You know how they say one step at a time, mm -hmm. one step at a time. So I would go through, find the homes that need the least amount of rehab. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned broken windows, but if it's just simply broken windows, um, maybe some soft spots on the floor, that's pretty easy. Find your local mobile home supply store. and if, Hopefully you have one in your area. If you don't, try online and see if you can get the specific windows for it for that mobile home. Or you may just go to a glass company and get it. them to come in and cut it and glue it in. They will tell you, you know, there's a chance it could leak and whatever, but there's a chance it could not. So it's cheaper to maybe do that, that route. Um, but yeah, I will go home by home, find the ones that have the least, least amount. amount of repairs, start there. Once you get that one up and running, Start getting tenants in. Don't wait until you got the whole park completely looking beautiful. Just go ahead and start getting tenants in there or selling the homes if that's what you're planning on doing mm -hmm. or rent to own. And explain to them that just like their house is in beautiful condition inside and out, that's your plan for all the other homes in the park as well. Could Jeff do a rent to own and uh, let some of the new tenant buyers assist with the repairs? Yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah, you can. So what you could do <coughs> is you can sell it as is, yeah. um, and then you just let them know they're gonna be responsible for repairs. Be careful, make sure you have paperwork because you don't wanna do that on a verbal. Because if they go in and then, you know, I don't know, they, they have some money come in their pocket and they blow it on something else, yeah. or it could be an emergency and they're not able to complete the, the repairs. repairs on the home, then you're, kind of stuck Duh. with this tenant because yeah. you don't have anything in writing of expectations. Yes. So I would make sure whatever your expectations are that you write that right down. Now. Gotcha. And you also make them sure they sign a lease and they have the rules and regulations as well. Um, so that even if that written notice doesn't work and you need to take them to court, you at least can get them out on, you know, violation of rules and regulations. Gotcha, gotcha. Wow, wow. What a wealth of information. And that's just video one, right? So don't forget, you got Stephanie's two-day masterclass in the video description. Go ahead and invest in that. Man, she put all, 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 just about four hours of content together for you to get you started investing in mobile homes. So listen, move on to video number two. She's gonna walk you into that unit. You're gonna see exactly what she's doing to renovate it. And number three, we're taking you to a, to a couple other parks that she manages. Round up, subscribe to the channel if I pour it into you, if we have poured into you like this content and share with anybody else that's getting started or wants to get started in mobile home investing. Listen, I'll see you on the next video. Peace.